We sometimes take the right to vote in Australia for granted, but not everyone has always had that right. Once the right has been granted though, how do you make sure everyone can exercise that right? This portable ballot box was one of the ways. Even then though, not everyone was given the opportunity to vote. And of course, the current system of parliamentary democracy that they were voting in was not the first lawmaking system to have existed here. This is our land. Our people have been making laws here since the first sunrise. Laws born from the land and honoured by our ancestors for thousands of generations. There are many stories to tell of our laws and custom and ways of living, of our deep connection to our land. Through the stories we share, we pass them down from one generation to the next. In sacred places, the ancestors dwell. In sacred places, the laws are made. The sovereignty of the Ajumatna people rests with us, as it always has done on this our sacred land. And when it's time for you to know and understand, and only then are there stories waiting to be told so that you can learn those laws. I get to vote today for the first time. How wonderful! And it's about time too. There's a gentleman waiting outside who's come all the way on a camel from Port Augusta. He brought the ballot papers with him and to keep my vote nice, safe and secure, he's brought a little metal box which he's gonna put it in, along with everyone's votes around here. Finally, I get to have a say. I've read some discussions about the elections recently in the paper and Noel talks about it all the time. I'm gonna vote for Mr Foster in the assembly. He's a current member and has a good record as a businessman. I met him a few times when he had the grocer shop in Quorn. He seems to be doing a fair job. So why change anything? Saw a man on a camel the other day, travelling. Asked him where he was going. Up north, he said, there's an election on. And he needs to make sure everyone entitled to vote gets a vote. Pointed at something. A metal box is what they put the votes in, he said. Not my vote. No one asked me for my vote. None of our people have been given the chance to vote. Thousands of years of being here and we're still here. Thousands of years of laws and they still our laws. A metal box, huh? You can't put thousands of years of making laws and telling stories into a metal box. For the woman on the remote farm, this metal ballot box meant that she had access to democracy. That having been granted the right to vote, the government had done everything it could to make sure she had the opportunity to vote and that her vote counted. By contrast, while Aboriginal men were granted the right to vote in 1856 along with all men in South Australia, the government didn't do what it could to make sure they had the opportunity to vote. In fact, it wasn't until 1896, two years after South Australian women were given the right to vote, that the first vote by Aboriginal people was recorded in Raukin on Nanajiri country. So while Aboriginal men in South Australia technically had the right to vote, they were often not told about this right. And in some cases, Aboriginal people were actively discouraged from enrolling or voting. The reality then is that to many Aboriginal people, this was just a metal box. And that if it represented anything, it was also power in decision-making over land that they had always held deep connections with. Land that laws were birthed from that they and their ancestors had honored for thousands of generations. So, even though there weren't a lot of votes to be had, the grand idea behind the portable ballot box was that if you're going to give everyone the vote, you need to find a way to make sure everyone has that opportunity. As we know though, it depends on who you mean when you say everyone. There were many powerful people in Australia who at the time believed that everyone did not include Aboriginal people, nor did it include other non-white Australians. 